What's going on guys? Um, I'm going to be extending my channel uh, to include some other things uh, outside of the world of uh, collecting sports cards. Um, and I'm actually going to start with, um, sorry, I'm going to start with uh, basically doing some reviews of some flicks that I watch, uh, both on DVD and on uh, in the theaters. Um, <coughs> I used to actually review movies for like the longest time when I was younger. Um, so I'm going to bring that uh, to YouTube, basically. So, I went and uh, saw Transformers 2 last night, Friday night. Um, I actually did like the first one. Uh, I grew up on Transformers when I, was, uh, when I was a little kid. I always watched the cartoons and uh, actually have the DVD for all the seasons and whatnot. Uh, liked the first one. Action was good. Story was pretty decent. Uh, acting was actually okay. Comedy was not bad. Um, so I figure second one might be okay. Uh, seeing how it made like 300 million plus in a couple of weeks. Uh, basically, I did not like this movie very much, uh, just a, in a nutshell. Uh, the first half of the movie was <laughs> actually pretty atrocious. Uh, there was so much slapstick humor, uh, I, I really couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I, I wanted... I wanted Megatron to come out of the screen at some point and just shoot me in the head. Like, seriously, I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, the first half consists of so many one-line banters back and forth between uh, Shia LaBeouf and his parents, and they really dominate the screen a lot uh, for, uh, like, the first third of the first half of the flick, really. And uh, a lot of it's just bad. It's not even really funny. Uh, like in the first one, they had you know they had their cute moments in the house when he was trying to find you know when he was trying to hide Bumblebee in the Autobots around the house and things like that. That was pretty funny stuff. Uh, second one, it was just a lot of it was shock value. Um, we had the we had Shia LaBeouf's, uh, uh, aka Sam Witwicky's mom, uh, basically just throwing out profanity laced tirades at the t <laughs> you know at at, at, the, at the screen uh, just for shock value, I guess to see you know hey hey let's see how funny it is to see a, a grown up woman uh, you know curse um, you know there were some other things that I thought were a little immature uh, there were there were a lot of uh, transformers both Autobots and Decepticons that were introduced. Uh, and, and a high volume, and, and there were really, I mean, there were so many that were just thrown at you um, without really telling you who they were, and a lot of them had accents, I mean, you had you had people who had, like, gangsta accents, you had, you had like, somebody who had a German accent, uh, a little transformer who pretended like he was a doctor and whatnot, had a German accent, I mean, it just, it was so goofy at, at a point, like, I, I thought I was watching like a scary movie spoof or something on Transformers. It's just, it lost the appeal of what you went to go to see. Um, you know, Megan Fox, obviously very attractive, uh, but even her, you know, just a little whiny overall. Uh, really, really not fun to watch after a while. Uh, a couple of the action scenes, the intro scene was pretty good. Uh, a couple of really nice, uh, really nice fight sequences in the beginning, but then it, it went into this boring droll of slapstick humor for you know, the next hour or so, and uh, that stuff was really not good. There was really no plot uh, other than you know the fallen will rise, which we didn't even know what that meant until the second half of the movie. Um, second half came up, and you know the movie picked up a little bit. They cut down on some of the uh, the ridiculous over the top comedy. They uh, had John Turturro come come in, who was uh, previously uh, head of Sector Seven uh, in the last flick. You had uh, Shia LaBeouf uh, get introduced to his college dorm um, <coughs> and find his roommate, uh, who actually was kind of entertaining. He was a little bit stupid in the beginning, but uh, he actually had some of the better lines. He was he was kind of a, a funny character, and he played it off pretty 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 well. And Totoro was pretty decent too. The action definitely was good in the second half. Like I said, they toned down some of the uh, idiotic uh, lines. Uh, in the second half, the story gained a little bit of momentum, but still, really not that much of a story. Uh, they tried to uh, introduce the Matrix, which is long known as uh, you know what Optimus Prime used to have to be the leader of the Transformers um, in this like roundabout way, um, which then ultimately led to the final fight sequence. I'm not going to get into details because I don't really want this to be a big spoiler or anything. Um, but the final fight sequence was actually pretty well done. CGI was solid. Um, CJ was solid throughout the entire movie, as a matter of fact. Uh, you had a couple of really nice sequences, including uh, Optimus Prime's uh, 
uh, close-up trans uh, transformation in the uh, airplane hangar in the beginning. Uh, the Constructicons when they formed Devastator was pretty cool. Um, and there were overall there were there were, there were some there, they really paid attention to the CGI and fight sequences were well done. And Transformers were actually like doing like martial arts in this film, which is a little bit interesting. But uh, it actually translated pretty well. So the action scenes were definitely solid. Um, I guess there was a long drawn out scene at the end, which was not bad. It was pretty good. Uh, though there were a couple of really stupid things that just made you think. And I know when you go to watch a movie about big alien robots from another planet, you're supposed to kind of throw out, uh, you know, suspension of belief to a certain extent. But, um, you know, where did the United States all of a sudden get this uh, Gatling gun, plasma Gatling gun on a, on a, on a, on a helicarrier or whatnot? Why were they only able to fire it once at Devastator and not use it any other time? Uh, the other thing was uh, when Totoro tased... Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf's roommate in the back of the car and then 15 seconds later they're shown getting out of the car and the roommate is conscious. Made no sense whatsoever. So, I mean, you have to keep some semblance of reality of certain other things even though we can, uh, you know, forgive the fact that they're aliens invading the Earth and whatnot. Uh, basic laws of hum human principles and physics have to be followed. But uh, that being said, CGI was good, action was alright, um, story was eh. Acting was, Shia LaBeouf was good, he was solid, you know, Totoro was decent, but some of the other stuff was just not necessary, it made it too over the top, and lost some of that initial appeal of the uh, Transformers. Uh, they introduced, uh, for just for Transformer geeks, they did introduce uh, Soundwave in the movie, and they did use Soundwave's original voice, so that was pretty cool, because he was one of my favorite Decepticons in the, uh, in the animated series. Uh, though Soundwave does take a different form, he's not the actual... Uh, cassette player that he's uh, you know was in the cartoon series even though he did eject Ravage out of him uh, and of course uh, you know Optimus Prime uh, was great um, the only Transformer that was really probably not annoying on screen other than maybe Bumblebee um, overall the uh, movie was not very good uh, out of scale of 0 to 100 subjectively I give this about I don't know 70 to 75 somewhere within that range uh, probably wouldn't watch it again. Even on a DVD, I probably wouldn't even get it on Blu-ray, even though I own the first one. Objectively, I think if you're a younger kid, you're looking for a summer popcorn flick, you just, you know, you're younger, you just don't care about watch going in and watching a political thriller or whatnot, go for it. You'll probably end up liking it, but for those of you who are a little bit older and want a little bit of sense in your sci-fi movies, um, definitely this may come, come across aggravating you, so... Uh, objectively, I'll give this probably like in the low 80s, like an 80 if you're a young kid just really going in for a mind-numbing summer flick. Other than that, I'd avoid this. Thank you.